Hello, this is Timothy with Computer Aided Instruction. In this series, I've been meaning to give a more in-depth discussion of web design, but I interrupted the lectures to talk more about using specific CSS properties like float and display for organizing containers or pictures on your page. We also discussed embedding multimedia on a page in the last video using HTML5 code. In this video, I want to get back to the fundamentals of the overall page layout, but we will also discuss some topics related to code. So if you just want to see examples of me coding content on the page, look at the video description for timestamps for those specific topics. Web design fundamentals. When you are making a website, you obviously want to consider what content you are including on each page. Your best bet is to make a sitemap, as we discussed in the very first video in the series, but you'll also want to go further and create a Word doc or a Google doc or whatever word processing um, client that you like to use. And you want to go ahead and plot out all of the text that you want to appear on every page. And you want to include what multimedia, what pictures, and how you want to arrange this content on a page. So you want to start putting some thought into that aspect of web design. You also want to think beyond just including paragraphs and headings on a page. You want to think about arranging content into tables, using lists, incorporating infographics if you can. Maybe you'll have brief videos to help convey information to your audience. You kind of want to make your pages quick and easy to digest so that you can keep the attention of your audience if they're not really invested in your topic. So when you think about it, the home page of your website is going to be giving like an introduction to the topic, but it's also going to be serving as a directory to other pages where they can get more in-depth information. And not just your home page, but also you might have landing pages for different sections of your website. So you want to make your website eye-catching to a certain extent, and you also want to make it informative, and you want to have a good blend for the audience that you're trying to reach. So let's take a look at some different websites from different companies and see what's making them function successfully. Let's start by taking a look at the Honda Motors website. So one thing you'll notice at the top is we have a logo for the company. We have a collapsible menu on the side. And as we scroll down, You'll notice that the emphasis is on showing you the products that Honda sells, so their cars, motorcycles. I wasn't too familiar with them selling aircraft, but they sell jets, so that's pretty cool. And they have boats and things like that. And then there's some emphasis on showing you video of the products in action, giving you some information about what they're doing to protect the environment by making vehicles that are that have better MPG ratings and whatever other initiatives they have going on for uh, renewable energies and things like that. So if we keep scrolling, at the very bottom of the page we have this footer section, which has a lot of links. It's basically another directory. We have the menu on the side at the top, but we also have links repeating at the bottom. We also have additional links to their different social media platforms and some of their um, corporate information like their legal terms and conditions, their privacy policy, and information about using cookies to improve your experience. And there's a sitemap here. Which is not really too in-depth. They're giving you the major section headers, I suppose. Let's go back. I like this uh, banner they have at the top. Like I was saying earlier, the main emphasis is on giving you pictures of their different products. If you click the pictures, it'll take you to different pages that'll support the product because there's just way too much information to have it all on one website. So they have a separate website for their automobiles, a separate website for like their boats and things like that. Um. Here's an article about an airbag being recalled. Let's click that. And when we finally start to seeing text on the page, because again, their emphasis is on showing you their products. So there's a really uh, heavy emphasis on pictures. But once we start seeing some text on the page, it's really easy to scan it because they have it in columns. Each bullet point 
It's really short, it's just one sentence long. We have the Spanish language version on the right hand side of the page. We have videos to give you more information about this airbag recall. And then we have a table with some more information about what vehicles are affected by the recall. I actually do drive a Honda and I don't see my car on this list, so I'm in good shape. Not to mention I had a brought in my car for a checkup just a few weeks ago, so everything that needed to be repaired has been repaired. And that didn't involve the airbag. One thing I don't really care for on this page is the fact that they're centering all of the text in this uh, cell of the table. I mean, each sentence is only each paragraph is only one sentence long, so that's not this isn't like too bad. But if you have multiple sentences forming larger paragraphs, you do not want to center that. Let me show you what I mean by this. So let me show you what I mean by uh, centering the text versus left aligning it. So here we have a standard paragraph which is left aligned. I'm using a Arial font. Every time you read a sentence, your eye goes back to the left edge of the screen. So it's it's really uniform, and you're used to this is just basically the kind of paragraph that you're normally accustomed to seeing. But when you center the paragraph, like right here, the left border is kind of broken up and it uh, looks like some of the sentences are indented. And it's just not a pleasing experience for your readers. So if you want to center like a heading for a section, that's going to be fine. But I would not center a big block of text. Another thing that I don't recommend doing is justifying your text. So when you have justified text, the left edge and the right edge is perfectly lined up. But what that does is it causes the words and the um, the spacing between words to differentiate between every sentence because some sentences are going to have fewer words, some sentences are going to have more words. So therefore, there's going to be a big gap of space between words to make sure that the words, that the sentences all line up on the left and right hand edge of the screen. And this makes it looks like I hit the space bar way too many times between words and it's not really pleasant to look at. And it, it can also affect people that have uh, learning disabilities when they're trying to read text that the spacing is really, really weird and, un, uh, and it's not uniform. It could affect the way, the way that they're reading your paragraph. So if you wanna make sure that your text is um, usable by a larger number of people, I suggest that you just use a standard left alignment. Rather than justifying or rather than centering. But again, if you have just like a short sentence or just like a phrase or a heading, centering that would be that would be perfectly fine. Now, I'm not trying to criticize Honda too much because I think their website looks really good. This isn't terribly offensive to me, <laughs> uh, since it's only one sentence uh, composing each paragraph in this statement, but I would have left the line that instead. And the whole table, to be perfectly honest. But anyways, let's go back to their homepage. This is their newsroom site. Again, the emphasis is on uh, showing you the product. You can learn more by clicking these links and it takes you to, more often than not, it takes you to a video so you can see the products in action. So let's check out a different company's website. Here's a website by the Institute of Physics for any uh, science fans out there. Now, I like physics. I would have liked to have majored in it, but I changed my major uh, after a year of physics. <laughs> I liked my physics classes, but I wasn't a huge fan of calculus, if I'm going to be perfectly honest. But that's neither here nor there. Anyways, uh, so here's a website about physics. One thing that I want to point out is that, well, again, you have uh, the logo of the company in the top left corner. You have a menu at the top. If you need additional links, there's a... Um, collapsible menu on the left hand side of the screen. I don't think they're using it really well if this is all that they have inside of it, but 
some people have like a large volume of links like we saw on the Honda website. And then there's a search bar right here, a login option. So then here's your header and then here's your body where you just have information into different uh, containers, the title of the article, a blurb, and then here's the actual article itself. Well, it's not really an article, it's just your policy statement. These are just headings with paragraphs and some links embedded. And here's a video embedded on the page. We talked about embedding video in the last uh, lecture video. This is all something that you guys are perfectly capable of doing with just basic HTML5 code. You don't have to use a really fancy editor. Here's a horizontal, here's a horizontal rule, just the thick red ones, probably like two or three pixels thick, an additional navigation bar, copyright information in the footer, and some uh, social media links. Website was designed by Catch. I think it would be interesting to see what their website looks like. I'll take your cookies. I... Anyways, I'll just accept it. I'm not going to be here very long. So here's the catch website. Here's their logo. Nice big banner at the top of the page. Information are arranged into a grid. You could say that these are inline blocks, or you could say that they're just floating with some text overlays. There are there are different ways you can use HTML5 to uh, create simple animations like this. I'll have to talk about it in this future video. And then here's their footer with their corporate information. So their mailing address, social media links, privacy policy, and things like that, cookie policy. So again, this header region at the top is going to be the same on every page. This footer is going to be the same on every page. I'll prove it by going to a different section. And like I said, the, the header and the footer are all, those are gonna be your two unifying components. You gotta have your branding up top in the header and then some additional information about the corporation and the bottom. And in the middle, it's just gonna be pictures and text and links and just information that pertains to the section that you're on. So let me close this out. Let's go to another website. Let's check out Wikipedia. Now, in comparison to that physics page where I said that the paragraphs were, uh, let me reopen that. Well, never mind. On this website, I want to point out that one thing that's not really common on a lot of websites is that the paragraphs are going to be really wide. Wikipedia knows that they need to give you a lot of information. So in comparison to the physics article, which had really narrow columns of, uh, well, the articles were arranged into really narrow columns. Wikipedia is giving you a much broader column with much longer paragraphs. So this might be a little bit harder for some people to, to follow along if, they, if they're not necessarily avid readers or they just their eye wanders and they get lost. So having a really wide paragraph like this is not ideal, but if you need to convey a lot of information, you, you probably can't avoid doing it. I do, I do recommend not having your paragraph span from one edge of a screen to another. On the computer that I'm using to record this lecture, the screen's really narrow. It's about, it's like a 17 inch screen, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, my normal desktop that I normally use is, I have really, really widescreen monitors. So following from one edge of the screen to another edge of the screen is gonna be kind of a, it's going to be an unpleasant experience. But Wikipedia has a lot of information on any given page that they need to convey to you. So they realize you're going to mostly use this navigation bar to take you to the section that you want. So if you want information about like the demographics of the United States, I'm not going to necessarily read the whole article about the history of America. I would just go down to this one section. That's why it's important to have these headings to help uh, guide your audience to the information that they want. And having art and having pictures to actually, you know, 
illustrate some of the things you're talking about is also a great idea. These are just like containers floating on the right side of the page to draw attention to different pictures and to some captions beneath the pictures, things like that. So use a lot of different design conventions when you're formatting your articles in a website. Use lists, use tables, use paragraphs, embed videos to just give your audience a variety of ways to get content that they need. So let's look at yet another website. Oh, also again, Wikipedia has their branding at the top. Instead of having a horizontal menu, they have a vertical menu on the left hand side of the screen. Most people generally don't use this menu, I don't believe. I believe most people just use the search bar. And then when they're on the page, they use this, uh, this table of contents. So here's a different website for Six Flags. I like this website because they're using an image map, which is what we talked about in uh, a previous video. One thing about this image map though, is that when you hover your mouse over the different hotspots, you have this light box that appears or this pop-up window or dialog box, whatever you want to call it, that has a link to the different Six Flags parks and it has an icon, name of the location of the park. Uh, let's go to one in Texas, I guess. I'm not necessarily from Texas. I'm not gonna tell you where I'm from. If you wanna know, you can reach out to me. But I am in the South. In Texas tradition, they're focusing on some, their barbecue and things like that. You have some videos with the different rides. I'm surprised they're not showing you that much of the roller coasters with the Six Flags website, but nevertheless. So we have the logo at the top, menu, with drop down menus so that the main menu isn't too cluttered, but you get the section headers at the top and then you click the drop down for more information. We have information about the tickets that are being sold, different discounts for uh, group rates or uh, season passes and things like that. We have a bunch of different containers and I guess these are either floating or inline blocks. You can organize your material that way. You just have a title, a picture, caption beneath. And then you have a button. This, these buttons, these aren't actually buttons. These are just links with the background image and there's a curved uh, border radius to make it look like a button. But I think this is just a link with the background, a blue background. And here's just another container with a, with a border, a link, and a image floating on the right side. These are all things that you're capable of doing if you've watched my previous lectures. And then we have a, just a container that fills the entire width for our registering for their newsletter. And then we have our corporate information at the bottom. So if you want to see their privacy policy, terms of use, uh, information about diversity and inclusion, their corporate partners, what initiatives they have going on in the community, ticket prices. Uh, usually you would see something for careers at the bottom of the page, but I'm not seeing any uh, information about jobs that are available at this particular Six Flags Park. But anyways, here's their social media links. I'm not gonna follow those. What is Dr. Cliffhanger or Dr. Diabolical's Cliffhanger? It's either a new roller coaster or maybe a haunted house or something. I'm not gonna sit here and watch the video. Sometimes it pays to just have, yeah, it's a roller coaster. It pays to have text because sometimes you don't wanna sit and watch a video. So that's Six Flags. It's a fairly colorful website. A lot of pictures to show you off the park, some videos to get you pumped up to go ride some roller coasters and things like that. Here's another website. Here's one by Rolex. I wanted to show you this one because they have a nice video background at the very top showing off their watches. 
giving you a feel for the luxurious experience of owning a Rolex. I personally don't own any watches, but if I had one, I wouldn't mind having a Rolex, I suppose. They look pretty cool. In the menu, they have uh, showing you their inventory, which is really cool. This one looks kind of cool. See, the one looks pretty cool, but that's beside the point. No, I'm not asking for a Rolex. I don't really wear watches. Um, so the emphasis on this website is showing you the products. Really graphic heavy, kind of like Honda. They have a lot of videos because um, and then they have their logo at the top in the middle instead of on the left hand side, which is perfectly fine. And there's a search bar and things like that. Let's check out a different website. Here's a website by the Children's Learning Institute. This is for education of minors, but well, really young children, like uh, I guess preschool and elementary school. But again, you're gonna see in the header section, you're gonna have uh, the logo, links. Some of the links have drop down menus, so the, the navigation bar is not too cluttered. You have a nice big banner at the top. You can, you can use uh, Pixlr or Photoshop or something like that to make a banner like this. This is just an image. You can tell if you grab it and you can drag it around <laughs> and you see this small version of it. That's how you can tell something's a picture versus uh, some sort of text-based graphic. They're centering their text, which I don't really recommend doing, but it is what it is. I'm not gonna criticize people for doing that. But I think this looks a lot cleaner than this, but that's just my opinion. Here you have a background image that's kind of faded out, uh, mostly transparent. You have some text overlaying the image. This is a website that's mainly for parents, but they do have this kind of cartoonish graphic on the side. If, if this website was made for children, you would see a lot more of this and less actual pictures of like real people, I would say. But this is more focused on parents. Um, so you have a lot of pictures of educators with children, or maybe these are parents with their children in different learning environments. But anyways, this is a, this is an image. It looks like it's just an, an HR code with the color radiant, but it's actually a picture. It isn't, it wasn't coded that way. So you can make something like this in Photoshop. I did something like this for a uh, journals website that I made. I made these color bars and in, in, in GIMP, I believe. And I just would use them as section dividers on different pages. So they looked kind of like this. This, actually, this website looks a lot. It's not a lot like the one I made, but it, uh, these color bars are reminding me of a website that I made once. And this background image is just a color gradient. This is something you can use HTML5 coding to do. Well, you wouldn't use HTML5, you use CSS to make a color gradient. This one's just uh, a horizontal gradient. So from left to right, it's changing from blue to a purple to transparent. And then you just have headers, you have sections, paragraphs, you have these uh, call boxes to emphasize bits of information by giving it um, Usually you would make the text a lot bigger, but they're just changing the color. This would be called a quote or maybe a call box is what I am commonly calling it. And then you have an image floating on the right. I'm pretty sure these images have alt tags. Let me inspect it. Yeah, their alt tag is blank, which is not good. I wasn't expecting to see that. An alt tag is basically, if someone's using a screen reader because they are maybe um, legally blind or and they or they just don't have images loading on their web on their browser, automatically by default, a screen reader when it's going line by line through the the content on the page is reading it out loud to the to the person using the screen reader. When it gets to an image, it can describe the image to you 
if you have an alt tag. So you add an alt tag to give a description of the photo. But I guess the people that designed this website didn't feel that the photos were that important. They're just kind of decorative. They don't pertain to the information uh, that's being described in the history of this corporation. So not including the alt tags here is not necessarily the end of the world, but it is something that you would normally do. Here's another learning website, eLearning for Kids. This is something that kids would actually use, so it's much more colorful, even more colorful than the last website. The menu bar is much more simplistic. This looks kind of like a flash game, so I'm sure if we click these different levels, it'll take us to different educational games that children could use to learn about science in some way. I guess this one's, this one's going to probably be about agriculture, plants and whatnot. This is something that's well beyond what we can make just using basic HTML5 code. There, are, there is software out there that you can use to make like uh, interactive gaming elements like this. Um, and this navigation bar is on the left hand side of the page. Anyways, I'm going to close that out. Let's go to a different website. Here's yet one more children's website. This is for even younger children. I would guess that this website is maybe for like uh, kids in maybe second, third, fourth grade. This is definitely going to be for kindergarten and pre-first. When we follow the link, the Navigation system is all picture based. Everything's arranged in the neat columns. You can get to different uh, educational games that way. So there's very little text, it's mostly just pictures. So it's definitely for a younger audience. Let's check out some more websites of a different topic. Here's an educational site for obviously college students, MIT's website. So you don't see the cartoony images, it's just pictures of different college students and professors and researchers. Um, let's go to education. Very text heavy. Videos showing you some of the activities that students are engaging in. List of different departments. Let's see what the uh, IT department looks like. I guess maybe the science, technology, and society department. I suppose they have a major in IT. I haven't really looked through this website that much. No, I don't go to MIT. Um, so again, top in the top uh, region of the screen, you have your logo. You have the, um, the program of study. You have your navigation system. You have a big banner here with some additional links below it. And then you have your information arranged into two columns. You have some videos embedded on the page and things like that. And corporate information at the bottom. Instead of it going the full width of the page, it's only going about, I'd say about 60% of the page or 55, something like that. So it's just a nice looking website. Just about all of the websites we've been looking at other than the children's sites have been using a white background. And the Rolex site has, it's, a, it's fairly dark just mostly because of the videos. But for the most part, uh, most people use a really bright website with a white or slightly silvery background in this case. Um, let's look at some new sites. Let's change away from school and education. Here's the New Yorkers website. They have their logo at the top in the middle, search bar, uh, navigation bar beneath it. And then they have everything arranged into grids. So basically, if you think about it, like on this side of the page, this is a container. You have a picture at the top, you have an article, the article title, you have a little blurb explaining what the article's about, and then you have the byline for the author. 
And then beneath the container, they don't have a border, but they do have a border bottom, which is this little line at the bottom. And the articles, the text is not going fully across the, sc the screen. So the middle region of the page for any given article has the text and it's centered on the page. So you might give this like a width of uh, maybe six or 700, I guess. And then you would use uh, display as a block for this container, margin auto or margin left and margin right auto. Let's go back to the home page. If you think that it would be really complicated to arrange your content like this in these different, in this grid like fashion, well, think back on one of our previous lectures. We already did this, and I already showed you how to do it. So, the main region of the page is this container called main. I have a margin left and right. I don't remember what the dimensions were but I'm pretty sure I set these to auto or I just gave it like a margin left of maybe like 20% or something like that and a margin right of the same percentage I made the navigation bar a little bit wider that's why it looks like it's uh, not perfectly aligned either that or it's because of padding or something like that I'd have to look at the code again and then these different containers are inside of this one container so it's basically like playing with Tetris. You have containers sitting inside of containers. Some are floating to the right, some are floating to the left, or some are not floating at all, but they just have a margin so that they're not running against the edge of another container. So it's kind of like playing Tetris when you're using all of these different um, containers inside of containers. So hold on a second. Let me open up another page. If you guys remember this from a different tutorial where I showed you how to float blocks around so that uh, you're filling different positions of the screen. We also you talked about displaying inline blocks. So if you don't want to use uh, so if you don't want to use the float property because it can be really confusing using the float inline blocks is a much uh, simpler way to go about doing the same thing or arranging things in the columns. If you're, so if you're not confident in your ability to arrange material into grids, go back and watch some of my old videos and we cover this material. This is all something that you're capable of doing. It's just a matter of uh, embedding images and some text and arranging it in different ways within each, within each uh, container. And also experiment with different colors. One of my favorite websites right now, let's get away from the news. Let's go to W3 schools. Again, they're following the same conventions we've been talking about. Logo top left. Menu with uh, at the very top of the page with uh, drop down menus if you need more information because you don't want your main menu to be too cluttered. It's better to have drop downs with additional links so it doesn't get to be too confusing and too jumbled and hard to read. I will show you how to make drop down menus in the next video. So stay tuned. If you're wondering how in the world that they have this background color that curves, that has a curved edge, I'm pretty sure that this is just a background image. So you can make this background image with uh, Photoshop or something like that. And you can have a curved edge or you can have some sort of stylized edge, make it look like puzzle pieces or something connecting. Um, and then you would just uh, put it up as a background, as a wallpaper, and have uh, all of your text layered over it and your links and your, uh, and your search bar and things like that, whatever you want to include on the page. The rest of the different sections have a diff just a solid background. This uh, It's not a background image, it's just a background color. So this is like a pale yellow. This one's black. This one's gray. All of this color coding is helping you to um, group information visually which is just uh, which is just a really good practice that you're using and 
so this cover so this website is really colorful it's really eye-catching so down in this section the background is black but the website's still not drab because of all the pastel colors that they're using and it looks really cool to me and when you add when you mouse over these different sections they're using a hover effect to change the color to make it pop more when the when your cursor is hovering over the icon Also, this, this home page scrolls quite a bit. They have some video here, so it's not just text and these little uh, containers. So there is some video and here's some infographics as well. I didn't realize they had a color picker on this website, which is cool. Yeah, so I've been scrolling quite a while. At the bottom, they have their social media links, uh, information about their forum, information about the organization, the terms of use, cookies, and privacy policy, and just their copyright and things like that. So let me scroll up some more. Let me click one of these items. If you want to learn about vector graphics, this would be a interesting tutorial to follow let's just stick to HTML so they have a navigation at the top and on the left hand side information is arranged into three columns the central portion is the most important these are just basically kind of like advertisements I might so if you wanted to have uh, ad banners on the site, this is a good practice to help make money on your website. Let's move on to another website. We talked about the New Yorker a little bit. Let's look at another newspaper site. The New Yorker is known for its cartoonists, so that's why you see a lot of cartoon images. It's just part of their identity. So just because you're a serious news site doesn't mean you can't use like uh, these kind of elements if what if that's what people are accustomed to seeing. The New York Times is a bit more serious, but nevertheless they have the same kind of format. The logo at the top, navigation bar, information arranged into grids, text, blurb, an abstract I should say, image floating on the right. Or just links uh, ranged with horizontal bars in between either that or this is just uh, a series of containers with a uh, border bottom but not a border on the sides and on top this one doesn't have a border on the bottom at all so you can have your images above your uh, article titles and your abstracts or you could have it on the right or the left hand side you could have some commercials if you want to make money. Actually, this might be an article for cereal company. Just horizontal rows. You could make you could use tables to align all of this stuff if you don't like using the um, inline blocks or floating. But the problem with using tables is that once you start like having audience members that are using different size screens, your article is not gonna necessarily reorganize and reshape itself using a table. So using different containers and just using CSS to float things around on the screen allows you to reorganize things a little bit easier. Or you could just use inline blocks or you could use flex, uh, used to flex property which I haven't made a video on yet and then you have at the very bottom the footer information so the New Yorker and the New York Times are people say that they're left-leaning news institutions so let's look at a conservative news site like Newsmax a lot of conservative sites tend to have a red white and blue color scheme here this is actually pretty interesting they have all of their information centered on the page 
and they're giving you a lot of articles so the emphasis is on just seeing the picture and seeing the heading and seeing the title of the article I should say and then just deciding from a very 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 short uh, summary if you want to make the decision to follow the link and read it so in a lot of cases they're just giving you bullet points with uh, indexes of uh, articles that they have let's just click a story and see what it looks like so they do have some videos in the top corner and a different panel you have your <clears throat> you have your logo at the top you have your links at the top you have an article picture summary well a caption for the picture in this case the byline and then you have the article text which again the rows the <clears throat> the rows of text are fairly narrow which is common for most news articles <clears throat> as opposed to wikipedia which has a lot of content they need to give you news articles tend to be fairly short so that they can give you information into small easily digestible paragraphs they just need to tell you who what when where how and why and get that information to you as quickly as possible i think I think you get the general idea for the layout of your websites. Have a logo at the top, have a uh, menu bar either at the top or on the left uh, hand side of the page is the most common way places that you'll see. Uh, the navigation, arrange your content into grids, incorporate pictures, incorporate, uh, you can embed videos if you want. Uh, try to put your information into lists as well. Don't let your paragraphs be too wide and span the full width of the page. Try to differentiate the color scheme of your website so that every page isn't just black and white because that can be really, it, it can make your site look really bland. And if you have a dark theme of the website where you have a dark wallpaper, I suggest that you have um, just the background dark, but have different elements in the page be colorful so that your website doesn't seem just like dark and bleak and oppressive because people aren't gonna stick around that long unless they're unless you're like making some sort of like i don't know dark cyberpunk website and then having that aesthetic might be um, a bit more appropriate for your audience and again you want to consider what your audience uh what they're expecting when they visit your website like young the websites that i showed you for children tend to be really graphic heavy websites that are showing off products for like a, a car manufacturer or like a watchmaker those are also going to be image heavy but the images are going to be live shots rather than hand-drawn pictures like with the children's website which had all of the <clears throat> flash videos and vector-based images so in the next video we're going to I guess we can return to this website <clears throat> and make it a bit more colorful because this is doing a lot of things that I said you sh we shouldn't do, which is have the text run up against the edge of our container. So we can add some padding here. We can add a wallpaper to the background so that there's some more color. We can maybe make the background. We could make it black if we want to, to keep in touch with the color scheme of my logo for computer aided and destruction. Or I can maybe use a wallpaper with some, uh, some sort of like a graphic in the background. What I think I would do is probably use like a, a blue background. So that way that these w containers can have uh, a white background to, you know, have some contrasting colors on the page. Or I can make the background red or something like that to keep in, to, you know, stay in union with the color scheme of the logo. I'll think of something, but one thing I don't like so far is that these links, I guess this black background, don't have enough contrast. So we'll talk about things like figure ground contrast, we'll talk about grouping elements on the page, I'll show you how to make a drop down menu, and we'll talk about just improving the color and maybe improving the font as well.
So, thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned for another coming up shortly.